it's Kira and welcome back to another weekly vlog. It is currently Friday morning and as you might be able to tell from the dark circles and intense bags under my eyes it's quite early in the day and so I'm trying to kickstart my morning with a bit of caffeine and so I've got a hot coffee instead of my usual tea to start the day just because I really need the caffeine boost and that's because I'm heading out for a yoga class where I'm obviously teaching the yoga class so I need to bring the energy and that is why the coffee is so so essential for this morning. Some mornings I'm like super ready to go and I'm like bouncing out of bed at 5 30 with like so much energy and then other days like today I just need a little bit of help from my friend caffeine so today is one of those days but I also realized on the topic of my yoga class that there is an update that I didn't end up sharing with you in last week's video because quite frankly there were so many things to say and I just couldn't fit them all in but this is actually going to be the last week that I teach this Friday morning yoga class and that is because I'm starting a new job in a couple of weeks which I was so excited about but my current job is a four-day work week so I work Monday to Thursday and then I have Friday off and the rest of the week weekend as well which is really really nice and that means that I can fit in teaching this Friday yoga class but my new job is going to be back to the classic five day Monday to Friday work week and that means I obviously won't be able to fit in this yoga class so a little bit bittersweet because I will definitely miss teaching this class but I'm hoping to be able to find another slot either like really early in the morning or maybe on a weekend at some point that fits in with my new work schedule but for now I won't be teaching any yoga classes regularly it'll just be like covers but like I said it's bittersweet because while I'll be sad to not be teaching the yoga class anymore I am so so excited about my new job I will like fill you in more about it when I actually start which is on the 8th of August is my first day but it's still in marketing so keeping up with my like career trajectory in the same industry but different job different team different organization and I'm just so excited to get started because I just think this job is going to be such a great move for me and I'm really really excited about the place that I'm going to be working and the people I'll be working with so very very happy and exciting life update but it will obviously mean a bit of a change of pace for me because going back to the five day work week might be a bit of an adjustment and I won't have my three day weekends anymore but I still do this week and I still do next week so I'll just have to make the most of them while they're still around but after I teach my yoga class this morning then the rest of the weekend will begin and it's quite a quiet one this weekend I've got a couple of coffee dates and all of that usual stuff that I jam into my weekends but aside from that I have two books books that I'm hoping to start definitely and fingers crossed maybe even finish this weekend because I'm making the most of a little bit of a quieter schedule and hoping to get quite a bit of reading in. Now these two books that I've picked up could not be further apart from each other in terms of their style and their genre and the themes of the book but I'm equally excited for both of them so without further ado the first book that I've picked up is Flowers in the Attic by Virginia Andrews. Now this book was recommended to me a couple of years ago now when I did a Rebecca read-along with my friend Jess and we were doing a live show and someone talked about this book and I can't remember exactly what was said about it but whatever was said made me intrigued enough to order the book immediately and then essentially it's been sitting on my shelves ever since so I've really wanted to read it but I've just never gotten around to it and I don't know why. I feel like that is the case with so many books on my shelves where you're really intrigued about them and you really want to read them but you just never end up picking them up. But this weekend I'm going to change that. It's also, although we're still in the middle of summer, it's the end of July right now, a very very moody weekend. It's looking very grey and hopefully quite rainy so I feel like a dark thriller like this should hopefully just feel very atmospheric and I can't wait to dive in. So that is my dark, creepy, spooky book for the weekend. And then to lighten things up, we have An Island Wedding by Jenny Colgan. I think I might have mentioned this book in last week's vlog as one of the contenders to read last weekend. And I'm just so excited about this book because I love Jenny Colgan. I love the picturesque and like tight knit community setting of the island that these books are set on. And I just think these books are so uplifting and I never ever finish one of these books without a smile on my face because I just think that they are so so wonderful and uplifting and obviously this one is not set at Christmas time like the other one so it's going to be like a summery vibe rather than a Christmassy one so it actually will be fitting for the time of year and I just can't wait to dive in and like see what happens because it's been a couple of years now since I read one of her island books I think the last one was Christmas at the Island Hotel and that came out not December 2021 but I think it was December 2020 so yeah a couple of years since I've read one of these books 
and I just can't wait to dive in because I just love it and I think the cover and the golden spine are just to die for. So those are the books that I'm hoping to read this weekend and I really really hope that I enjoy both of them. I'm like 100% certain I'm gonna love Jenny Colgan's but Flowers in the Attic is a bit more of a rogue choice and I feel like thrillers can be very divisive and it really depends on like the theme of the thriller and how it's written and what happens and all of the different elements of mystery that are kind of like built into thrillers. Sometimes you really vibe with the author style and other times not so much so this is kind of like my gamble book and then Jenny Colgan is like my I'm definitely gonna love this book but they're both so different that I think I'm gonna be able to read them both at the same time and have a very balanced weekend in terms of reading themes. So cheers to Friday, welcome to the vlog and now I'm gonna go and teach my yoga class. I've said it many times, I know I would change my ways, I know for sure When all the crows decide to meet They settle down beneath my feet I've got it right and I got it wrong Right, well I'm all done with yoga and some of you who've been around for a while might recognise this room because it's where I used to film all of my YouTube videos. It is at Jay's parents' house and we've just come over here because Jay is helping his dad cut a tree down in the garden. So I've popped over as well just for a change of scenery and while I'm waiting for them to cut stuff down and do manual labour things, I've brought my book with me and I'm going to get started on reading Flowers in the Attic. I brought both books with me but this is the one I'm leaning towards starting first so I'm going to get cosy in this room which is by far my favourite place to read. I've definitely missed this because while I love mine and Jay's house, it's obviously a lot smaller and there's no like specific reading place. Everything is just kind of like mixed into one. So I just read in the living room or in the office. But in this house, this was kind of like my filming, reading, book stuff room. So I really enjoy reading in here, especially in the summertime because it's so like bright and sunny and you can see all the trees around you and it is just a lovely space. So perfect space to start a brand new book and that is exactly what I'm gonna do. But I learned my lesson hanging on. Come sit here with me by the fire and let it go for a little while. So be here as the night starts falling. Let my fingers walk over your head. Be Nothing to be scared of I'd rather be with you than by myself Not always in your hands I'm very much enjoying spending my Friday afternoon here with my book and I'm now on page 90. I read about 50 pages earlier today then I went out for a little run because although it's meant to be very rainy all weekend it seems to be quite sunny and very summery right now so I thought although I'm excited for autumnal and gloomy weather I might as well make the most of the sun while it's here so I went out for a quick two mile run just to get that bit of fresh air and then I came back and read another like 40 or so pages bringing me up to page 90. Um, and I'm really enjoying this book so far. It was mentioned to me as a book that was meant to be like intensely creepy and very, very dark. And naturally that made me really want to read it. But then of course it's been sitting on my shelves for such a long time and I haven't actually looked up anything about this book. So aside from knowing what the blurb says, which is Chris, Kathy, Corey and Carrie have perfect lives until a tragic accident changes everything. 
Now they must wait hidden from view in their grandparents' attic as their mother tries to figure out what to do next. But as days turn into weeks and weeks into months, the siblings endure unspeakable horrors and face the terrifying realisation that they might not be let out of the attic after all. So that blurb and the fact that it is of course meant to be a very dark, creepy book was all I knew going in and I think that was definitely the right attitude to have with this book because I'm not someone who is like scared of spoilers. If I get spoiled, I don't mind it and actually I sometimes actively try and seek out spoilers especially for films and tv shows because i actually quite like knowing what's coming up because it allows me to focus a little bit more on the detail when i kind of know the bigger plot points to expect i don't know if that's just me or if anyone else does that but with thriller books and dark twisty mystery like mysterious books like this i try as much as possible to know as little as i absolutely can before i go into reading the book because I think you just get the most impact from the story and from the mystery that way. And I'm really, really enjoying seeing that mystery unfold. I haven't actually got a lot to tell you about the plot so far because basically that blurb summarises it very, very well. There is an accident that occurs at the beginning of the book that kind of shatters this perfect family and then in a sort of effort to try and preserve her family and make sure that they can like survive, the mother of these four children takes them to live with her parents, so the children and her live with the grandparents basically, but the grandparents are a little bit crazy, very, very, very religious to a point of being like obsessive about it. Um, and they're also quite violent and aggressive and just like very moralistic. So they're not very nice. And one of the rules that they impose on Corinne, the mother and her four children is that these children can only live in one room in this house and they're kind of like pushed aside and they're kind of treated as a secret. And the children and us as readers don't actually know why that is yet. And that is of course, one of the mysteries that is yet to be unfolded but it's very dark very creepy the grandmother character is obviously like the primary villain of the story and she is just absolutely horrible but obviously that is like 100% intentional and then we're getting the story from Kathy's perspective she is the second oldest child she's 12 years old and then Christopher is 14 I think and then there there are two twins uh, Corey and Carrie which is just a bit of a tongue twister to say, and they're four years old. So those are the siblings. Kathy is telling the story, um, and it's told retrospectively, which I think is interesting as well. But right now, I don't have many more plot points to talk about other than just that I'm really enjoying the writing style. It's mysterious and dark, but also like very, very intriguing, and it keeps you wanting to know more. And I just think it's very well written so far. So excited to read some more. Still waiting for Jay to finish off with cutting stuff down and digging stuff up so I'm just going to get on with a little bit more reading now. The only thing that was for me And I saw the angels coming down And they sang a song and sang you loud And I still remember parts of it And the yellow glory Saturday morning and if you're wondering if I did any more reading last night the answer would be no. Jay and I came home from his parents house after he finished helping his dad with all of the jobs there and we ended up finding a new tv show to watch which is called Dark. It's on Netflix, there are three seasons and it is a German sci-fi thriller type show set in a small town where a child has gone missing but it seems as though there are like hints of something bad having happened or it not necessarily being like a classic missing person case and then there are also these references to something that happened 33 years ago and like things feeling as though they're like leading back up to a similar event so obviously we've only watched one episode so far but it was super interesting and because it's in German as well we're watching it in German with English subtitles it's also a really great one because I've had this show highly recommended to me 
as just a great show to watch but some of you might know because I think I've mentioned it before that Jay and I used to go to like German evening classes and we were really trying to learn German but just over the years with like life getting busy and jobs and all of that kind of stuff it kind of takes a back seat but I know that watching shows in the language that you're trying to learn and sort of like immersing yourself in hearing it more often is a great way to like reaffirm the language so I'm also really happy to be watching that show for that reason so it's a double win and although we've only watched one episode I can definitely tell we're really gonna like it because it just seems exactly like the sort of thing that we would enjoy so that was my Friday evening and now Jay and I have been out this morning for a run which was so good. We went out for just a one mile run, but it was like a time trial. So we were both trying to run as fast as we possibly could for that one mile. And I think this has given me a really good boost because since running after COVID these last couple of weeks, I felt myself being really slow and I felt like my cardio fitness just wasn't as good as it was before, but I actually got my fastest ever mile time, which was not a fast time in like general, like uh, running sort of terminology. It was an 8.28 mile, so not super fast by any stretch of the imagination, but my fastest personal time. And I always like to remind myself with running, especially as like a recreational hobby runner that the only person I'm competing against is myself and my own time and my own fitness. It doesn't matter if there are people out there who are running like six, five minute miles even because that's them and that's their level of fitness and that's their running ability whereas I'm only focusing on mine and trying to improve and my previous best mile time was I think an 8.55 so I've cut like nearly 30 seconds off of that time which I'm really pleased with especially given the context that I'm like recovering from Covid and I wasn't expecting to be able to go very fast so that has given me a real morale boost in terms of running because I have felt a bit down recently every time I've been going out for a run and I've just been finding it harder and feeling like I've been a bit slower but to have achieved that has just made me feel like a lot more motivated and a lot more confident in my own ability so that has been my Saturday morning and now I'm just about to head out to meet M for a coffee and some banana bread which is just like always on the agenda when we go to Brew and Brownie because they have the most amazing vegan Biscoff banana bread and I am addicted to it so I'm going to grab a coffee, grab some banana bread, catch up with M, and then I'm also meeting my stepdad and my sister a little bit later for coffee but those are the only plans I have for the day so once I'm back and once I'm done with all of my coffee dates I'm going to be getting right back on with some reading. I'm thinking that the next thing I'm gonna do is start an island wedding because obviously yesterday I focused completely on flowers in the attic, whereas now I want to start this book and see what it's all about and kind of get through a few chapters of this one. And then I think once I'm like maybe a similar amount of pages in, about 90 or 100, I'll then just like piggyback the two and keep swapping between them as and when I fancy. But I'm very happy to report that the very uh, cold, wintry, rainy autumnal weather that I have been expecting this weekend has officially returned and it is now raining, it's grey and I'm feeling like it's just going to be the perfect day for cozying up with a book. So coffee dates first thing on the agenda and then lots and lots of reading. other runners out there can relate but I have since starting training for this half marathon started suffering with really bad shin splints especially in my left leg but I heard through a runner that I follow on TikTok and on Strava and stuff that compression socks are meant to help so I spent myself £45 on these bad boys and I'm now wearing the most unattractive compression socks to try literally anything I can to make this shin pain go away because quite frankly, it is just not the vibe. It's like a very strange thing. Again, I don't know if this is just me, but when I actually run, the pain kind of subsides. I don't know if it's just that I get in the zone or that you're 
like the impact or just like the focus on the running kind of takes away from the pain but then it's the in-between parts where I'm just like walking around in daily life that my shins just hurt so much so I'm hoping that compression socks will work and um, either way I'm giving them a try and they cost £45 like I said so that is an expensive pair of socks so I'm really hoping that they at least help a little bit but that is what I'm wearing right now and now that I've been home from all of my coffee dates I'm just sitting in my shorts and my compression socks and I have of course started on my reading of An Island Wedding so Jay and I have spent the evening watching a couple more episodes of Dark and then in between I made my start on this book. I'm about uh, five chapters in which is about 40 pages and so far as predicted definitely enjoying this book. It is like a direct continuation of the last book that I read but about six months into the future so the last book finishes in Christmas obviously in like December because it's Christmas at the Island Hotel and then this book is now taking place the following summer so a lot of the relationships the events and things that were mentioned at the end of that book are kind of like still in progress and I won't say any more about those particular things because I feel like if anyone wants to read the series that would be spoilery but there are some new characters being introduced one of which is like a girl called or a woman called Olivia who is a island resident or at least grew up on the island but then kind of went on to bigger and better things but she is still remembered on the island as like this incredible beautiful best girl that ever existed in this place um, and then she is coming back and is trying to book the hotel on the island for her wedding and it's the first time she's come back in years and so that's causing a bit of a stir and a frenzy meanwhile her own sister who still lives on the island is absolutely devastated at the fact that she's coming back because she has always been overshadowed by her younger sister and doesn't like the fact that she can just like come back to the island and create so much like attention for herself so that's interesting because I think um, it's nice about these books, the island books, that there is like a continuous cast of characters that you can see like grow and develop throughout all of the books but it's also nice that each one introduces like new fresh things that mix things up a little bit more and as I said very predictable, but I am really, really enjoying this. I haven't read any of Flowers in the Attic today, but I am going to pick that up again tomorrow. It is currently seven minutes past eight in the evening, so I'm going to finish this cup of tea and then go to bed like the old lady that I am because I'm planning to do a long run in the morning, so I want to get plenty of rest. <laughs> Sunday guys so Jay and I have just been out for a lovely rainy morning walk and I am so obsessed with this weather but now that we're back I'm fancying a hot drink and although I normally do tea taste tests the other day in the shop I found this Beanie's coffee variety pack whoops it's clumsy this coffee variety pack here which has a little sachet with loads of different flavors of coffee and um, there's like caramel popcorn cookie dough mint chocolate um, Irish cream, coconut, hazelnut, there's loads of different flavours, I think there's 12 all together. So I thought instead of a tea taste test, this morning I might do a coffee taste test. And the flavour that I'm going to start with is one that I have super high hopes for because it sounds absolutely incredible and it is maple fudge flavour coffee. Now that sounds like a bit of me in coffee format so I'm going to make this up and then give it a little taste test and fingers crossed it is as delicious as it sounds. My coffee is officially ready and I am so excited. The only thing that I don't like about this mug, this is my first time using it, is because it's so tall, like a regular teaspoon, it's actually quite hard to stir all the way to the bottom, so that required a little bit of manoeuvring. But the coffee itself looks delicious and it smells 
really really nice what i like about the smell of this one is that it's got like quite a sweet creamy smell obviously the maple coming through and then i think like the fudgy flavor is going to kind of be like the additional like sweet and creaminess to the coffee flavor but it also doesn't have an overpowering or like sickly or artificial smell which obviously sometimes flavored coffees can have they can be like super um like stevia e, which is like obviously like a really strong sweetener flavor and i'm not a big fan of that so what i'm hoping is that it tastes as nice as it smells so let's give it a go cheers I think like with teas that obviously is like a stronger smell than there is flavour but there's definitely like a subtle sweetness and mapley flavour coming through and that is exactly what I was hoping for because like I said I don't want it to be overpoweringly sweet. Also just in like <laughs> full transparency um, I'm obviously like a few weeks out now from having Covid and I lost my sense of taste and smell so I still have like got most of my taste back and my smell is a little bit like off still so I do think that potentially it might taste and smell stronger than I actually can sense just because I haven't got my full senses back yet but what I will say is it's a really tasty coffee and I'm very much excited to sit down have some breakfast drink this and get cozy and then if it stops raining I'm going to try and like psych myself up to get out for that run that I mentioned I need to do this morning. Not just I'm not ready for autumn. Autumn comes too soon. and also of my shin injury, my shinjury, um, I've decided not to go for a run this morning. Instead, I'm just gonna give my leg one more day to rest and then get back to it tomorrow and do the run that I'd planned to do today, tomorrow instead. But that means that I'm making the most of a very sunday -y Sunday morning by sitting inside and getting on with lots of reading. So I am now on page 194 of Flowers in the Attic and that means I'm about halfway through now. And this book is, one that I'm struggling to develop an opinion on because it's obviously a very disturbing book. This like concept of these four children being confined to this one room. Meanwhile, their mother is living this very lavish lifestyle as she tries to win over her father, ultimately with the goal of like getting an inheritance and you believe in her good intentions to begin with. But as the plot goes on and these children are in this attic for longer and longer and kind of the two older children are having to take on this parental role and this responsibility for the youth, the two younger twins it's just like a very uncomfortable reading experience because your faith in the mother and in her good intentions suddenly starts to kind of like dwindle away and it's a bit of an interesting one because as I mentioned uh on Friday or Saturday whenever it was that I started reading this book um we have of course got this grandmother figure who plays like the villainous role and of course she is absolutely like despicable and a horrible character to read about but something sort of clicked in me as I was like going through the book and reading more and more that the grandmother is like a sort of textbook villain and I feel like it's interesting because you kind of like see what you get with her and you understand that she is villainous whereas the mother is almost like this perfect character who then you start to see is not quite as perfect as she seems and potentially this mother figure who you thought was so nice and loved her children might actually be the true villain of the story because she's putting her children in this horrible situation and actually not doing anything to help them. So yeah I'm struggling to form my opinions on it because it's a very like uncomfortable reading experience and it's quite like disturbing to sort of like see the situation that these children are in but of 
of course that is what the book is meant to be about so it's one of those weird ones where it leaves you feeling very uneasy but then because that is what the book sets out to do you know it's written quite well but it still doesn't make it like an easy reading experience so I wouldn't want to say that I'm enjoying it as such because I wouldn't say that about a book that kind of deals with these topics but I'm certainly intrigued by it and definitely want to read more and see what happens so definitely be doing that as well as reading some more of An Island Wedding which I think I'm going to do next but in the interim I have decided this morning that I'm going to try and make a sourdough starter or at least start one because it's obviously a process that takes a little while to actually get going but the reason for this is firstly because I just love baking and I haven't had like a baking project that's like a bit of a challenge for a while now so I thought that could be quite fun but also it's currently a bit of a difficult time in terms of the world state and also like cost of living and all that jazz so I thought you know things like sourdough bread absolutely delicious luxuries but it's like three pounds for a loaf of sourdough bread which obviously isn't a huge amount of money but then when it like adds up and you're buying it a couple of times a week or whatever it just becomes like a little bit of a luxury that you kind of feel like you don't want to spend money on something as simple as bread and the cost that it like costs to make bread versus what you end up paying for it in like an artisan bakery it's just astronomical and you know that it probably costs like pennies to make but then you're paying like the big bucks for the actual bread when you actually buy it so I thought I would try and make myself a sourdough starter so that I can have my luxury sourdough bread actually have some fun baking it and save some money in the long run as well so I'm gonna go and try and make that sourdough starter paint my nails because again I'm trying to save money by doing my own nails instead of going to the salon and getting my gel nails done and then I'm gonna do some more reading hey darling can I tell you what's been on my mind sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car, leave a little note and we'll drive real far. Let's get out, we can leave this city, let's drive to the ocean. Sound is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday, baby. Don't you understand that we only get one life? I wanna make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. Hey, darling, I love it when it's me and you on the road with a couple of tunes in a car for two hey darling you know we're gonna have a really good time driving in the middle of the night when the stars are bright pack our bags and get in that car Countryside is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday, baby. Don't you understand? So, I guess painting my nails was a half success. I certainly enjoyed the experience. I sat down with a cozy YouTube video, my candle, and got on with painting my nails. And the first four nails went very, very well. They dried fine, and I think they look quite good considering that I don't paint my own nails very often so I'm kind of like honing the skill however the thumb of this finger and then like these three fingers and this thumb they all just seem to keep smudging no matter how long I wait to let them dry I just can't seem to get them to dry properly so I have one finger on this hand that's looking good and four fingers on this hand so I've kind of got a whole hand if you put them together but the other ones not looking so good so I've taken the nail varnish off and I'm going to try again however we are actually heading out to go and see my brother and my dad at my brother's house they're going to be watching the F1 race and I'm going to kind of 
do some reading and painting my nails in the background while that's on and then we're gonna go see Jay's dad and his sister to go out for dinner later so we've had a fairly chilled out Sunday morning and then quite a jam-packed afternoon but I'm hoping that I'll have time to do a little bit of reading a little bit of finishing off my nails and then going out for pizza which I cannot wait for Stand, now we only get one life I wanna make it count honey come on now and take So it's now Monday and I'm having a pretty terrible day, not because it's Monday, but because my little pal over here, Gatsby, is quite unwell, um, which is just a horrible, horrible, horrible thing to watch. But um, for anyone that doesn't know, Gatsby has been around for the last like seven and a half years. I was 17 when we got Gatsby, me and Jay. We were still in high school, we were in sixth form together and we got Gatsby, he was our first little pet together. Um, so we've had him for quite a while now. Um, and we also had another rabbit with him called Willow who we sadly lost a couple of years ago now. I have a video up about it if you're interested, but that was genuinely one of the most devastating things I've ever experienced. Partially just because of like, and devastation of losing an animal but also because Gatsby and Willow were a bonded pair and they loved each other so much and I think for me and Jay the saddest part was thinking about Gatsby being around without Willow um, but rabbits for anyone that doesn't know or hasn't had them can go downhill very quickly because they're such small animals they can be absolutely fine one week and then just through like a short illness because they're so small they can lose weight so quickly and so Gatsby has been off his food for the last couple of days over the weekend um, and he seemed absolutely fine like literally in last week's vlog um, you can see him I was laughing about how naughty he was because he was climbing on these bookshelves he was running around all over the place and he was like living his best life and me and Jay were joking about how he was still like such a young rabbit with so much energy um, and then yeah literally in the space of about three four days he has dropped a significant amount of weight definitely more than he should um, and he's not eating he is just like sitting still and not really doing anything so it's genuinely always blows my mind how quickly rabbits can go downhill because he seemed absolutely fine last week and he was absolutely fine um and then yeah just within the space of a couple of days he's just like drastically gone downhill and because they're so small as well it can be so hard to figure out what's wrong with them and whereas with like a bigger animal you might do more investigation or even like surgery and things rabbits are just so sensitive to like anesthesia and things like that that it's just so difficult to know what's the right thing to do and yeah it's honestly like we've been back and forth throughout the day just being like it's such a horrible situation and you just want to do what's right for them rather than what you want to do and you just want to like make sure that you're not putting them through any stress but that's kind of besides the point so we have or rather Jay took Gatsby to the vet today um, and the vet did not seem very optimistic she said that it was not looking so good in terms of his weight and also although he's like seven and a half years old and that's not like super old it's like fairly old for a rabbit especially one as little as he is um, and so she kind of said that when they get ill when they're a bit older they find it a bit harder to fight anything off that they would like be able to do more naturally when they're younger so the vet has taken uh, sent us home we she, he's been given some like pain medication and also something to try and stimulate his stomach which is the thing that I think is causing him issue um, and can make rabbits go downhill very rapidly um, we've been given some like liquid syringe food that we're then going to try and feed him to try and get things going again um, because rabbits within like 24 hours if they don't eat they can that can be it because they have just like such sensitive little bodies so that's what we had to do with Willow and I think that's making us feel a bit pessimistic as well because we obviously know how that ended up but we've brought him home and um, he's also a bit chilly so we're trying to warm him up it's the middle of summertime it's august but we've got the heating on and um, we've had him with a little hot water bottle tucked in i'm trying to make sure that he's drinking and hopefully that he might eat something but he's back at the vets tomorrow morning so we're basically monitoring monitoring him for like 24 hours since his appointment um and ultimately the vet said that if things haven't improved if he hasn't eaten anything within those 24 hours so before we take him back to the vets tomorrow um that it's not 
not going to be a good sign basically and that will be it basically so I'm trying not to be like not to lose hope because all he has to do is like eat something but at the moment it's just not looking so good and he just looks so sad and obviously like I said it's been just like such a hard day where you're just really trying to think about what's the right thing to do for them and like it's honestly just such an emotional thing and there has been many a tear shed today between me and Jay because it's just like like I said he was so fine last week that this is not something that we were expecting to happen um and yeah I just I keep like tearing up about it I think I'm feeling like quite calm at the moment just because I'm like you know, it's currently quarter to six in the evening and his vet appointment tomorrow morning is at half past 11. So we have got a fair few hours still and I'm like holding out hope that he might be okay. But at the moment, it's just feeling very, very similar to how it was when Willow was ill. So I'm just like, I don't know. It's just like a really, really hard situation. So I'm not having such a great day and I just feel so sad for Gatsby and I hope that he is not in pain and not like struggling or anything that we can make him like comfortable and warm but yeah it's just it's sad pets are so wonderful but they're also like so <laughs> such sources of heartache because you just love them so much but they're not around for as long as we'd like them to be so um that's kind of what my day has been has been worrying about Gatsby um, and trying to decide what we can do to, to like make his situation better um, because I've been at work for the day as well I haven't done any more reading since I last spoke to you yesterday but as we're going to be up for like probably most of the night because we need to syringe feed him quite often and just like monitor him very carefully um, I'll probably try and get some reading done this evening um, and I'll catch up with you either with some reading updates or with some Gatsby updates hopefully maybe some positivity to come. I'm holding out hope that things might be okay, but also trying to manage my expectations, having been through this before, and just try and like prepare myself for the worst whilst also hoping for the best. So that's my Monday, not the Monday I was hoping to have, if I'm perfectly honest, but working through and coping with the situation that we have been given. So yeah, happy Monday. I hope, hope your day, sincerely hope your day is better than mine and that your fur friends are living their best lives because honestly, I think people who don't have pets don't understand, but it is just so sad because they can't communicate to you like verbally and you just have to like, yeah, try and do the best thing for them. But it's just so hard so yeah that's me that's monday this was quite the ramble so apologies for that but um yeah i'll catch up with you in a bit oh my child i know you hurt and you can't let go it's not your fault and you don't deserve all the bad and the hurt Ooh, I know you tried so hard Ooh. So in times like these we do need some good news and the good news that we have right now is that my sourdough is officially working because it is bubbling up and expanding as it should. However, the slight bad news that comes off the back of that is it is literally exploding out of the top of this jar because it's expanded so much. So I've now got another jar which is shorter but wider. So I'm kind of hoping that this kind of um, fixes that issue for me because I'm gonna have to go and buy a larger jar but obviously I'm working today so don't have chance to go and get a jar right now but I'm gonna switch this over feed Gatsby again and then we're taking him to the vets to see what next steps are he is a little bit more like himself this morning compared to yesterday where he was very like low energy he seems a little bit more like energetic this morning but still not super interested in food so we're not we're not really sure what the next steps are but we're going to take him to the vets but first of all i need to save myself from a big sourdough explosion so good news sourdough is working bad news i don't have anywhere to contain it Ooh, i know you've done your part it's not fair you did your time 
How much longer will you suffer in this life? But don't give up. Just hold on tight. It'll be alright. Man, this week has been a roller coaster to say the least, honestly. I feel like I've been all over the place. I had such a positive weekend and then obviously beginning of the week we had Gatsby's illness and then that has kind of been the dark cloud over the rest of this week but it's also been my final week at my job. Today is now Thursday and it is my last day at work so that has gone so so quickly i think being so focused on gatsby this week has made the week go even quicker but even still the last four weeks my notice period has just been so so quick time is flying by and i do feel like leaving a job is always like quite bittersweet um because i love the team that i'm in and i've really enjoyed working at this place so it's kind of like obviously sad to leave a team that you love working in but also really really excited for the new opportunity and i'm really excited to get started in my new job so definitely bittersweet but mostly excited to get started with the new job I'm also very, very happy to report that Gatsby seems to be on the mend. We're still syringe feeding him, so he has medicine that we give him through a syringe, some syringe food, and then the vets also recommended giving him pineapple juice in a syringe. You're not usually meant to give rabbits um, like sweet things because they're like quite sensitive to that and they can also like gain weight very quickly, but because he has lost quite a bit of weight and also was very like low on energy, the sugar and the hydration is meant to be good for him, so we're giving him pineapple juice, food and medicine medicine and he seems to be on the mend compared to earlier this week when he was just like so lethargic he just had his little head resting on the like food bowl and he just looked so so sad whereas now he is back to being his usual feisty self so instead of just letting the syringe feed him he is trying to use his chin as a weapon and fight me away um, and it's just like so 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 nice to see that he's like back to himself and back to being energetic he's still low on weight he's actually still like lost a little bit of weight since the beginning of the week which is definitely something that we're going to keep an eye on um, and he's not eating a huge amount by himself but he is like nibbling at things and just like generally seems way way better because he is an older rabbit it's kind of like we're preparing ourselves for the fact that maybe this could be like the beginning of the end like this might be just the fact that he's getting older and starts to like decline in health and lose a bit of weight but what would have been so sad I think was to have like lost him in the state that he was in earlier in the week because he just seemed so so ill whereas now he seems so much happier and even if this is like the start of the end like I said I feel like me and Jay just feel so much like more at peace with it because we're obviously doing everything we can to get him into the healthiest position and to give him like a happy little life and we know that he is happy so the fact that he's looking a bit healthier even if it is only short term I feel better and it's just like yeah it's one of those weird things where with older animals you kind of know that you are just biding your time and it's going to happen at some point or the other but I think as long as you as like a pet owner know that you have like done all you can for them and that they are going to be happy no matter what the outcome and that they're like living their happiest life for as long as possible then I think I can feel good about that and just yeah it just is what it is so no sad news on that front it seems to be going in a positive direction um which is a relief because with willow a couple of years ago we were doing the syringe feeding and she obviously was just so unwell that even after doing that for like 10 days she just kept going downhill so to see gatsby bounce back so quickly is very very positive indeed so obviously with all of the rabbit shenanigans um i've not been chatting to you as much over the last few days because I have just been in a whirlwind of syringe feeding and worrying about my little bunny but I have been doing some reading in the background and I'm very very happy to say that I finished Flowers in the Attic this morning. I stayed in bed when Jay went to the gym and I decided to just commit myself to getting this book finished. Rated it two stars on Goodreads so let's talk about that because this book was at first an interesting read but as the book went on it became so much more of an uncomfortable reading experience and although in a certain sense I recognised that's what the book was trying to do it was just like too much for me some of the themes and the way that these siblings interact with each other um, and just like the way that the book went the direction it took it was really disturbing but also like highly unbelievable and also very frustrating because 
we have these two older children, Kathy and Chris, um, and they are like trapped in this room and gradually over the years their mother becomes less and less interested in them um, and the twins who are very young are sort of declining in health. Um, but Kathy and Chris manage to find like ways out of the house and they have just like opportunities where they could have escaped and I just feel like the reality of the situation is that they would have done something sooner because Kathy and Chris were 12 and 14 at the point of going into captivity and then you know obviously a little bit older towards the end of the book so they were old enough that they could have maybe done something and also were old enough to like remember what they'd lost rather than the twins who were like a bit too young to remember what they were missing out on so I just feel like there was a lot of like cliched writing, the characters felt very caricatured and not very believable. Um, the themes were like disturbing and not in a way that I felt was purposeful, just in like a an uncomfortable way and then a lot of what happened just felt like too unbelievable for my liking so while it wasn't a terrible book and it was definitely like a bit of a page turner and I managed to get through it quite quickly it was also just not a book that I would necessarily recommend. I, I'm like not mad that I read it but if I hadn't read it I don't think I'd have been missing out on much and it is part of a longer series I think there may be like six books in this series and I've now since reading it had a look at some of the summaries of the future books and it seems like the disturbing themes just keep getting worse and then yeah it just seems like not not very nice I don't know I don't know how to describe it without giving spoilers in case anyone does want to read it but ultimately I definitely will not be reading any of the subsequent books um, and I'll probably unhaul this at some point but yeah two stars not great so that's definitely a low rating for me because I love giving out five star ratings I love to rate books highly but this book just I couldn't because it was just yeah not good um not good at all in so many different ways so finished it though so at least it's another book ticked off and then I'm still plodding on through An Island Wedding which I'm really really enjoying so at least I can have one book that's bringing me joy right now. I'm on page 171 and the book has just shy of 400 pages total so I'm like a little bit under halfway through and it's just like exactly what I expected. It's uplifting, it's heartwarming, it has a little bit of grit and some drama, like a problem that the characters need to solve but you just know no matter what the characters are going to overcome it because that's just the sort of book that it is so it's like light-hearted, little bit of seriousness but nothing that you have to take too seriously or get bogged down in because you just know it's going to end well. So obviously going to continue on with this one but as we are approaching a week since I started this vlog and like I said what a roller coaster of a week it's been I'm gonna finish up this vlog here and I'll catch up with you in the next one with this book and another book that I'm gonna be buddy reading with my friend Em that I'm really really excited to start so I'll catch you next time for that thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one